Hi guys, this is our study for Jonah chapter 3. I've entitled it, Let's Just Do So. But as always, I want to remind you to let it be God's voice that you hear. And any commentaries that I may have, any understanding that I may have gained through reading his word. And of course, when we get to the Bible verses themselves, please only allow God's voice to enter your heart and your minds. Because that is where the instructions of how we should live our lives in accordance to his plan as we serve and love as many as he puts in our way. So here we go. Hello everyone, you are all very loved. I thank each of you for choosing to listen to God's word through these audios, which are made in love and reverence to the most high God, his son Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit. Because God is good always and in everything, he wants for us to choose him despite all lies, negative internal dialogue, rebellious ideas, self-doubt, and any external distractions. When we just do so and obey his word, the blessings for our lives and those who surround us become apparent and boundless. So let's just do so at God's first calling. Let us boldly obey him and walk the steps already ordered for our lives by his perfect plan. Jonah chapter 3 begins with an example of God's voice used with boldness and clarity. It is written how God spoke with direction and intent to Jonah by saying, get up and go. Here God was giving Jonah yet another chance to obey the calling to warn Nineveh's people of God's wrath if they chose to stay in their sinful nature. God wanted to restore them and offer an opportunity to surrender to his will so their lives would be fruitful and not destructive towards themselves and others. God didn't need Jonah, but he chose him in order to take the first step in starting the process of offering the message of repentance in order to achieve salvation for the people. Jonah almost walked away from that opportunity to collaborate, but God is merciful and continued to set up opportunities for him to obey in order to save many. God knew how it was going to work out in the end, but he set tests before Jonah, the king of Nineveh, the people, and even the animals of Nineveh. As we read the text together, we will discover what developed when Jonah finally obeyed. But first, let's ask ask ourselves these reflective questions. How often do I pray to hear God's voice in order to collaborate with intention in his overall plan for my life and those that surround me? Do I offer my life to God as a living sacrifice so that over time I become more like him and less like me? Do I make the decision to obey God boldly and with intention? Or do I allow self-doubt, my rebellious spirit, and distractions to keep me from obeying his calling and hence deny myself and others of his boundless blessings? As we begin to read chapter 3 in the book of Jonah, I remind each of you to pray before and as you receive his word, so you may hear his calling and message clearly along with the directions of how to navigate your life according to his perfect plan. That is just so lovely for me to think of how his word is living and how his life is should be parallel to our life his thoughts his way of being his boundless love and grace should be reflected in us let's see what chapter three has to tell us according to his word here we go jonah and this is using the translation the message jonah chapter three may god maybe god will change his mind Next, God spoke to Jonah a second time. Up on your feet and on your way. 
to the big city of Nineveh. Preach to them. They're in a bad way and I can't ignore it any longer. This time, Jonah started off straight for Nineveh, obeying God's orders to the letter. Nineveh was a big city, very big. It took three days to walk across it. Jonah entered the city, went one day's walk, and preached. In 40 days, Nineveh will be smashed. The people of Nineveh listened and trusted God. They proclaimed a citywide fast and dressed in burlap to show their repentance. Everyone did it, rich and poor, famous and obscure, leaders and followers. When the message reached the king of Nineveh, he got up off his throne, threw down his royal robes, dressed in burlap, and sat down in the dirt. Then he issued a public proclamation throughout Nineveh authorized by him and his leaders. Not one drop of water, not one bite of food for man, woman, or animal, including your herds and flocks. Dress them all, both people and animals and burlap, and send up a cry for help to God. Everyone must turn around, turn back from an evil life and the violent ways that stain their hands. Who knows? Maybe God will turn around and change his mind about us. Quit being angry with us and let us live. God saw what they had done, that they had turned away from their evil lives. He did change his mind about them. What he said he would do to them, he didn't do. Amen. I love this part where it says that he got up, a powerful king got up off his throne and threw down his royal robes and he sat in the dirt. What a proclamation of humility and of surrendering and saying, I do not have the power. I am not in control. Amen. May we all reach that ability to reach that humbleness. You know, life is that way for us too, as was Jonah's life story. God wants us to follow his path so that our lives may be fruitful and become living invitations so that many may receive the gift of eternal life through the message of repentance. Only by repenting and proclaiming publicly that God is our Savior and that Jesus Christ sacrificed himself and was crucified to pay for our sins, will we be welcomed into heaven? It's written in the Bible. When we decide to just do so and obey God, our life and that of others will change for the best. Because with God, only the best is available. (laughs) Amen. So let us be like the king of Nineveh. Let us get off our ego-centered thrones and make a public decree that we will heed humbly to the calling of God's voice. In doing so, it will be easier to become more like Him and less like ourselves. Let us strive to release any false sense of control and power. We don't have any. When we do so, others will see our bold decision and will feel inspired to follow us and walk in the steps ordered by God for their lives. Allow Holy Spirit to be your guide and you will see blessings begin to pour into your life as you become a blessing to others. As always, my dearest, I remind those that have not yet given their lives to God or those that need to re-surrender to do so today. Let yourself fall into the will of God so that your life can receive the freedom that only eternal life can give you. If you have a person who can guide you to say a prayer of accepting God, go and find them and do so in their loving company. If you do not, then do so right there where you are. God will be by your side as you call him to save you. 
It can be done in a simple prayer such as, God, I am here before you asking that you accept me as your child. I recognize that I have sinned and I make the commitment to turn away from sin to the best of my ability. I do so with a humble mind and heart. I recognize that Jesus Christ died on the cross in order to pay for my sins so that today I can be given the gift of eternal life. Thank you, God, for now. From now on, I will look to learn more about you and stay close to you. I ask this in your son's holy name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Do not leave this opportunity to be his child for another day. Do so now. God is good always and in everything. As God spoke to Jonah with these assertive and clear words in chapter 3, verse 2, let me give you a couple examples. According to the New Living Translation, it says, Get up and go. The classic edition of the Amplified Bible says, Arise and go. God's Word translation says, Leave at once for the... And then it says, The city of Nineveh. According to the translation of the message, it says, Up on your feet and on your way. Young's literal translation says, Rise, go. So as we hear, as we read and hear these words that are assertive, that were meant for Jonah, we can apply them too. May we allow his voice to sound in our minds and hearts so that we may just do so and obey. As we get up and go, serve and love others with the message of repentance. Who knows how many lives we can save just by choosing to do so. As always, I send you my love. And if it's in your heart, please share these videos with as many people as you can. And also, subscribe to this YouTube channel so that it can be displayed for many, many more. Together, we can do our share in proclaiming the good news of his word to all of his nations and all of his people. I love you guys greatly and goodbye. We will meet next week for the final chapter of the book of Jonah, chapter four. Bye-bye.